on WRJ. Anyone want to take a phone call? Sure, I'll take a phone call. Good morning, caller. You are on the air. Good morning. How can we serve you? Well, actually, I just just had a call and a respond. This is Mayor John Dicker. There he is. Yeah, he sounded like him. Yeah, I thought I'd recognize that Ma- voice. Mayor Dicker, look at you. Was <laughs> Welcome to the show. <laughs> so just, yeah, well, thank you. I just, I just had to respond because of a couple things, and I, I'm not asking George to be able to understand the complexity of a development like this, and nor am I asking him for <laughs> Far beyond my poor comp- power to comprehend, I Mayor. Think I think there's a, well, I think there's a couple of facts that just need to be in included in the conversation. And that is that, first of all, um, George, the argument about the welfare state is great, but, you know, the, the Wall Street corporate welfare costs the country $5 trillion. So I don't think you really should start comparing welfare to welfare. The second thing is that we have the lowest county tax rate in the area. And if your simple assumption, and unfortunately it's an overly simplistic assumption, is that because of a lower tax rate, you're going to draw in companies and businesses and people. Well, we do. We have the lowest county tax rate in the region. As a matter of fact, when people shop at uh, Michigan Boulevard or Michigan Avenue in Chicago, their tax rate is one of the highest in the country, but yet people tend to shop there. So, well, I mean, Mayor, and the county, the county population is growing, business is growing in the county. Listen, I can't let all these things pass. First of all, I do not support any kind of welfare. I mentioned, I, I said welfare, you're the one that said it was individual welfare, but the businesses also get welfare, and we're, we're opposed to that. There, there's absolutely ridiculous that we would be supplementing pe- uh, companies like McDonald's, giving them money so that they can advertise. So all kinds of welfare is just, is just a, a crutch that is doing no good for the economy. The, the county is growing in population. The county's growing. It's the city of Racine that is not. And don't start saying that we have the lowest tax rate in the, in the uh, state because we don't. We have some of the highest tax rates in the state within the city itself. Well, on the contrary, George, and if you look at the numbers, everything that you have just said is what everyone is doing to build the economy. The communities that are growing and building that you have talked about so fondly are the very communities that are using those incentives and those opportunities to build their communities. Well, that's not so true. There, there's been well, extensive studies in all these, all actually, these communities that, that bring in sports teams, and they find that all it does is build up their name. It does not increase the econ- economic activity. But, but, but there's the, been an extensive building, research. George, the on, development we're building is not about sports teams. It's about a hotel and a convention center. It's not about sports teams. Those are just additives to the, to the overall plan. But if you look at, and, I, and I've had the opportunity, George, to talk to these cities that have been growing at exponential rates, and they are doing the exact same thing that we are looking at doing in Racine. So I well, we're to, we've been doing that for decades. Machinery that Row is a good example of exactly that type of activity and how much has it brought in so far. And now you're already talking about extending a loan that was made to one of these so-called developers where he hadn't put a penny of his own money into it. And here now we're, we're, we're going to strip the taxpayers of more money for this thing called Machinery Row. So we've been trying this for decades to, to throw money into the economy. You, West Racine, uh, we, we've spent millions of dollars of taxpayers' money, and what did we get? A blood testing thing. We did not get more commercial activity in, in West Racine thanks to the activities of your bureaucracy. Well, again, George, the bureaucracy has been incredibly cut in the city of Racine. Your, your facts are completely off. And I've got to challenge you on that stuff because the reality is you're stating things that simply are not factual. You know well, they are well factual. All you have to do is look at the population, the, Mayor. The it continues to decline. People are continuing to, to, to leave Racine. George. And, George, that, and that, that is a... George, you need to let people get out the facts. George, that, you, know, well, you need to let people get out the facts. The facts are... Deregulation and cutting taxes have never grown the economy. Number two, it's important for you to understand that in the past, our TIF districts were bleeding out. Since I've been mayor, those TIF districts have all been supplemented to the point where they're basically costing the taxpayers nothing. And that DeVita Dialysis Clinic that you talked about was losing money. That TIF district was losing money every single day. They are now paying that TIF off, and that TIF is getting paid off 
So our taxpayers are getting their money back. He is. So ma- he's he's ma- to be honest with the public about that. <laughs> He is he Mayor J- Ma- Mayor John Dicker. It was a prize call. This was not a setup. I'm, I'm glad you're well, listening. And I, I, I you're, know, you're I coming don't in. Like when people do this, you're co- I don't you're... like when people sit there and tell lies as as if they're facts. It really bothers me when we're working hard to build this community, and when George is saying things about our community that are simply untrue. And flat out lies. I've got to defend it, so I apologize. Well, there, there you've heard it, folks. Apologize. Now you understand what I'm talking about. That the fact of deregulation and ro- lowering taxes does no good for the economy. It's an amazing. But, but that's just what I was telling you about, uh, Glenn. Is that, is that this is the attitude we have towards business in this community, and particularly amongst the bureaucracy. Is that businesses are there to be taxed. They're there to support. The, the government of this of this city and uh, and and the the result is people continue to leave we used to be the third largest uh, city in the state we're down to number five and I think uh, there's uh, Eau Claire one of the, one of these uh, towns is closing in on us we're about to move down to number six if we continue to lose people people leave because there are no jobs here they come here only if they have enough money to enjoy our our nice sands and our, and our good drinking water but they don't come here to find jobs all to an all all the well all, all, unfortunately <laughs> George you're mistaken because the reality is that the number of people in, in this city used to be about 4.6 per family so if that math was correct then actually we'd be half of where we are because the current family number is about 2.1 so given your math I'm using census you would be at about figures 40, mayor 45, <laughs> now the reality is George is that there are more apartments more condos and more houses built in the scene than ever but the family structure size has, has been uh, depleted, number one. Number two, the reason that the city was passed up, because the city of Kenosha doubled in size. We were below that. We were above them. So that's one of the reasons. The other reason is the other cities have expanded their base and expanded their opportunity in the platform. We haven't been able to do that because we're landlocked. So to, again, George, this landlock argument, those, Glenn. Those I'm sorry, it, 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 you can't let those things go. Not, George, we have so much not. room within the city. I look at all the vacant factories, the vacant uh, houses, the vacant lots, the the, again, the, George, the green again, space. George, it, it's just the brown, the brown field. It's it's just amazing that, and they blame it on because we're landlocked. Well, why don't we? Build within the city. Well, you can't build well, within George, the city. What are we There's too to much bureaucracy and too many the taxes. Site. We're offering to build on a brownfield site downtown. I mean, you you can't even keep your your conversation straight, George. We're building on a brownfield site downtown, and you're telling us that we shouldn't do that. Number well, I'm, one, number two, I, I, we have more. I'm looking at the old Jacobson Field. I mean, you know, area. there's there's a, a lot. I'm all I'm saying is there's a there's, lot of space. To build George, in in this city, and, and we're and we continue to lose people. All right, gentlemen, time George, out, time out, time, time out, Mr. Mayor, hold on, hold on. Lowest rates in history, <laughs> Mr. Mayor. Again, the facts are wrong, George. I'm up against a hard break. You're coming in Friday morning, right? Yeah, you know, and and, and I'm not going to talk about George because the reality is, unfortunately, he just keeps throwing out lies and mis- misinformation, and I think the public, when they go to the polls. They have to realize that. Let, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you truth. a question, Mr. Mayor. Why would George? What what incentive does he have? What motivation does he have personally for lying? Well, because of the fact that the Libertarian Party and this, these comments that they make are easy to sell. This is Trump-like sales, right? All you have to do is deregulate and cut taxes, and the country will be great. Well, guess what, George? George Bush did that for eight years. How did that work for you? The facts are the facts. And when somebody says about my city that I've been working hard for seven years to fix, that they're going to put out lies and misinformation, then I'm going to stand up for my city, my staff, and all the people that are working very hard all right, to build well, this city up. The only thing George has done is tear it down. All right, we'll we need t- builders. We'll talk to you Friday morning. We look forward to seeing you as always. Thanks for calling. I look forward to it. Thanks so much. And thanks for listening. There he goes. Well, I was surprised about that. I just took the call. I didn't know it was Mayor Dickert. So, all right, so he obviously directly compared your position to Donald J. Trump. and Yeah, that was marvelous. And and the tenure, the administration of George W. Bush. In our last moment, what is your rebuttal to that? Well, Bush did not lower taxes. And and Bush also— Well, but Bush did lower taxes. He had the tax cut, the Bush tax cuts. Well, okay, but but the— 
He did not rein in spending, though, that's for sure. Well, right, that's right. If you, I mean, if you just switch it over to debt, that, that doesn't do any good either. Um, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. The, the, uh, he, he, he lowered he, income tax. Yeah, he, he did. He, he, reduced, he reduced some taxes some. Uh, and and that also, he did it to boost the economy, and to some degree it did. But it didn't do it to the, the degree uh, because of the increased debt and, and the increased burden it put on the, on the American people. He gets all fired up, Mayor Dicker, you know. That's fine. That's fine. I mean, you know, that's that's uh, uh, he believes in he believes in what he says. I mean, you know, he he believes he he, he uh, said one time that he's not going to lay off any people in in city hall because they go out and spend money and that helps increase the economy. Uh, that is another one of the fallacies of the Keynesian people. The thing I talked about it's consumption driven. Uh, never mind that the people are giving paying taxes. Maybe they'd like to spend that money, but somehow it benefits that we give it to the government first, and then they go out. The, the bureaucrats go out and spend money at the shops. Well, he's not running against Mayor Dickert, although you wouldn't have known it, but he is running against State Representative Corey Mason in the mighty 66th District for that seat here in the uh, Racine County area. Thanks so much. I didn't know we were going to have a debate this morning, but that's uh, well, that, that was fun. It was, yeah, it was, it, was inter- it was interesting. Thanks for serving our country okay. and for serving our community, and uh, we'll talk to you again very shortly. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, thanks a lot.